It's not often that we're left in total shock after a result of a fight that the overwhelming majority of us correctly predicted. In the eyes of most people who tuned in to watch UFC 261 last weekend, Kamaru Usman was a huge favourite to successfully do the double over his opponent Jorge Masvidal. Not only had he already proven his superior skill set after their first meeting a few months back, but as a result of the clear improvements he showed us during his clash with Gilbert Burns, we had every reason to expect to see his title reign intact by Sunday morning. And though a lot of us expected an Usman win, even with his clear status as the betting favourite in mind, he still managed to leave the world in a collective state of shock through his performance. Kamaru's decision to go to work primarily in the striking department Department might not have seemed like the wisest choice heading in, and who knows, perhaps it wasn't even a part of the larger game plan. But even in that first round, Usman was finding his mark with a surprising degree of success, homing in on Jorge's chin on a number of occasions with that right hand. And when the fight did hit the mat, though Masvidal once again proved his well-roundedness with some excellent offense from his back, Usman still retained control over the fight's tempo and direction during that opening stanza. And on a side note, I don't think Jorge looked that bad in there at all. By the look of things, he was warm into the contest in the sense that he wasn't overexerting himself early on. Usman was clearly open to standing with him for at least some time and from Gamebred's perspective, gauging Kamaru's timing and feeling out his rhythm was likely a strong course of action early on. But Kamaru didn't just land that one hitter quitter out of nowhere. He had been finding his mark with a surprising degree of consistency in that first round, tagging his opponent with some very hard shots that definitely made it clear to Masvidal that he was in there with a very different challenge. And when that one final blow did eventually come, it was one of the most poster-worthy shots you were ever going to see. Usman cracked Masvidal like he had a rock for a hand, dropping him to the canvas before sealing the deal with a couple of quote-unquote super necessary follow-up strikes. That connection was straight out of a Rocky movie, and I honestly could not believe what I was seeing, but Kamaru managed to get it done again once again proving to us that he is far from a one-dimensional fighter. If there has been one thing that has really worked in Usman's favour during this last calendar year, it has been his activity, his willingness to step up and fight. Jump back 365 days, and Usman, though fresh off of his instant classic with Colby Covington, was still widely disliked by the fans. That boring fighter label still followed him quite heavily, and try as he might to convince the world of his merits as a compelling attraction within the sport, it didn't really seem like the general public were behind him just yet. But after these three title defenses, his pair against Jorge and of course his matchup with Gilbert Burns, the world now sees Kamaru Usman differently. If you're enjoying this content, be sure to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of our latest uploads, before leaving a comment to let YouTube's algorithms know that we're fast becoming one of the best MMA channels on the platform. I always had a lot of faith in Usman's ability to win the welterweight title, as I watched both his run within the Ultimate Fighter house and his eventual rise through the ranks of the 170 pound division. But I think there's every chance that Kamaru is headed somewhere very different now. I feel like there is greatness littered throughout Usman's resume up until this point. His shutout of Tyron Woodley, his instant classic with Colby Covington, his thrilling battle with Gilbert Burns, and now his annihilation of Jorge Masvidal. Through his efforts over the last two years, this this man has elevated his ceiling to a new level entirely. I really do believe that Kamaru Usman has the potential to go down as one of the greatest fighters of all time. I don't know how far he can go, but this man is an insanely talented athlete, one who has a very healthy attitude towards improvement, towards versatility. And though he does seem awfully concerned about how the public perceives him as a celebrity, I think he will learn that his actions inside the octagon will resonate with people a lot more than some recycled trash talk he borrowed from a certain Irish former champion. Usman is the real deal, and though he could have likely eked out victories over his last opponents through a more wrestling heavy approach, the fact that he didn't for the most part prove that he is still looking for challenges, ways to expand on the aura that surrounds him. So I suppose there's two questions about Usman that I will end on. The first concerns his next move, and for me, I think some well-earned time off is in order of course. After two fights in just over two months, I'd be happy to wait until a major pay-per-view later in this year to see Kamaru making the walk again. As for his opponent, well I do think that the welterweight division needs some time to rebuild, to reshuffle, but for now, it's obviously Colby Covington who deserves his rematch. I think that's a hugely compelling stylistic class. One that I would imagine Kamaru will be favoured in to an even greater extent now, thanks to his dramatically improved striking, punching power and overall eye for the finish. So yeah, let's wait a few months before then booking the rematch between Usman and Covington to close out the year. And of course the second question, the one that's on everyone's mind now that UFC 261 is in the past. Is Kamaru Usman now the world's pound for pound number one fighter? Has he proven enough to us through his impressive schedule and subsequent performances to move him beyond John Jones for the top spot? Well for me it depends on what you 
value. If the pound for pound rankings were to work like the regular divisional rankings, where a spell of inactivity causes you to drop places in favour of your more active counterparts, unless your name is Conor McGregor of course, then yes, I do believe that Usman is the world's pound for pound number one active fighter. I mean, how could he not be? It has been over a year since Jones fought, and though he is without question the more decorated athlete of the two, the more established talent with the better claim to the throne, I think given everything that's going on with John right now and his vacation of the 205 pound title, it should be Kamaru's spot. If Jones comes back and secures a win, I'd have no problem suggesting that he reclaims that spot, due to his win streak, his resume and his overall status within the sport. But for now, let's honour Kamaru Usman like the living legend that he is. Because love him or hate him, this man is on a collision course with greatness, and I cannot wait to see what happens next. But what did you make of Usman's impressive knockout victory? And furthermore, do you think he has done enough to single himself out as the sport's pound for pound number one? Do let us know in the comment section below, we always love to hear from you guys. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and a comment before subscribing to the channel so you can stay up to date with all of our latest uploads. Thanks for watching.